Let us all say amen. All right. We are grateful to Dr. Hart for that excellent uh, exposition of our Sunday School Pastor lesson. Davis. I am so Pastor. grateful and thankful that uh, he was with us and serving with us, serving the Lord with us in this season. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. We thank, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. All right. I want to ask you to continue to pray for Dr. Hart. Uh, he needs your prayers. I need your prayers. We all need your prayers, especially in a time like this. Uh, of course, I am Pastor R.L. Davis of the Corinth Baptist Church and the Chapel Hill area of the city of Tyler, Texas. We are just delighted uh, to be with you this morning. I want to take this time to wish each one of you uh, mothers on the line and on Facebook a happy Mother's Day. And uh, for those who have birthdays on this day, also we want to wish you both a happy Mother's Day and a happy uh, birthday. Amen. And we trust that each one of you uh, are practicing good hygiene. Uh, we have our mask. This is mine. And I wear it voluntarily uh, every time I go out, even though my wife reminds me of it. And my gloves that uh, we wear to try to keep safe and uh, how to keep from bringing um, uh, the pandemic uh, germ back into our home. So we thank each one of you. And at this time, we're glad to have with us uh, uh, my wife, uh, Sister Diane Davis, who want to say a happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. Just today. Amen. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ah, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I hope that you will too, because this is a happy, happy Mother's Day that He's given us. I want to wish all the mothers in Corinth Baptist Church a happy Mother's Day. And not only in Corinth Baptist Church, but in all the churches and our friends and relatives. This is a special yeah. day that the Lord has given us, and we are going to rejoice in it. I also want to say to our young people that we call DITS, that's D-I-T-S, or Disciples in Training, that we hope that you're wishing your mothers a happy Mother's Day, too. Amen. May God bless and keep each and every one of you and be safe as we travel through these dangerous times. Thank you. We wanted, we wanted John to come and to say uh, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And he stayed with us as long as he could. But he got restless and he disappeared. And I can't find him at the moment. But he was going to show you the card that he brought his mother for Mother's Day and also the flowers that he brought her. So in his, in his absence, I want to say for him, happy birthday to all of the mothers out there and to his mother, and my wife, Sister Davis. Amen. 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 All right. All right. We, we want to proceed. Uh, first, I, I welcome all of you on the line. There's our members, of course, and then there's some visitors. We welcome you uh, to this broadcast, and we trust that you came praying and looking to receive something from the Lord this day. And we want to trust that God will grant your request. Now, turn with me, if you will, into the book of First, not First, Book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6. And there we will find the scriptorial basis for the message today. And we want to read uh, for your hearing in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 2 and verse 3. That's Ephesians chapter 6. That's over in the New Testament, 
verses 2 and 3. Verse 2 says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Amen. So reads the word of God. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. From this, from this text, I want to talk from the subject, God's view of mother. God's perspective of mother. First of all, I want to say that God has a high view of mother. And I want to give you three reasons, which is the basic broad outline from which we will talk. And uh, the reason we say that is he included this command in the law that he gave the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt as a people, but not yet a nation. And since they were not a nation and was becoming a nation, they did not have laws and rules and regulations by which they would live. So when he brought them out, he took them to Mount Sinai, and he gave them laws, 633 laws, to govern their lives. And this, out of the 633, he pulled 10 that we call the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments. And he included this one, this command, in the Ten Commandments. And not only did he include it in there, we need to look at where he placed it in the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are broken up into two basic sections. One is about our relationship with God, and the second is our relationship with one another. In our relationship with God, the first part of the Ten Commandments deals with who God is. It's about Him. And about, second, it's about His name. And third is about His day. So those are the three or four, depending on how you break them down, of our relationship with God. And then the next ones are our relationship with one another. And the first one in the list of our relationship with one another is this commandment, which says, honor thy father and thy mother. So I want to not focus on the father part today, but just on the mother aspect of it. So I'm going to say, honor thy mother, because father and mother are equal here, that thy days may be long upon the earth. And this is the first commandment that comes with promise. And the promise is that thou things may be well with thee, and that thou mayest dwell long upon the earth. So he demonstrates his high opinion of mother by including and placing this commandment at the beginning of the commandments that has to deal when we deal with one another. And second, not only did he put it in the commandment at Mount Sinai, which is in the Old Testament, he brought this commandment over into the New Testament, which we call the Age of Grace, included in the New Testament. So that shows that not only was it just good for back then and during the time of the law, but he still counted as being important and hold mother in high esteem in the New Testament, which is the age of grace. And then the third, he demonstrated uh, his feelings and his opinions and his view of mother on the cross. So those are the three areas. He demonstrated in the law in the Old Testament. He demonstrated in the New Testament by bringing the law over to the New Testament as a commandment. And then he demonstrated it on the cross. Now, what is, what is the commandment? What is he commanding us to do? And first, it's a commandment, not a suggestion. It's not something that we have an option to do or not. But it was in the law, and now it is a commandment. And the commandment is that we would honor, give honor 
Honor means high esteem, respect, that we'll give reverence and praise and love and obedience to our mother. Now, now, some may say, well, well, that he didn't need to make that a commandment. That's something we're going to do anyway. Well, I'm, I'm, it's easy for some of us to do that. It's easy for some to do it. But he said, I want you to do it. I want you to do it. Give honor. And this word honor has with it the idea of something that we do when we first become uh, aware of who mother is. And it has no expiration date on it. So we do it once we first become aware and we continue to do it throughout all seasons of her life and all seasons of our lives. Now, Man. now, he said, honor her. Show respect for her high esteem and high reverence and praise and love and obedience to her in all seasons. Now, in the very beginning of our lives, when we are little children, there is no problem with us giving honor to mother because we think that she is the greatest person in the world. She has all of the answers to all of our questions. She supplies us with all of our needs. We go to her with anything. Mother has the answer. And second, mother is right there. She's available. So we have high opinion of mother in that season of our lives. But as our lives go on, as we become a little older, as we become to the age where we become aware of other things that are going on in the world, if we are not careful, we will, that mother that we revered so when we was five and six years old, you will become to think that she, especially when she started making us abide by certain rules and regulations and not letting us go where we want to go and do what we want to do and wear what we want to wear, if you're not careful, you will come to think that that same mother you revered at age five and six is now the meanest person in the world. But he said, don't let that happen to you. Still give her honor and respect and esteem and obedience, even in this season of our lives, when we think that she's the meanest person in the world. And then when we get a little older, not only will we move from the point that we think she's the meanest person in the world, but we think that she does not know anything. When we feel like she doesn't understand anymore, she doesn't understand why I love this person who is no good, why I want to be with them and not with... She just does not understand what's going on in my life. And if that careful, if you're that time and that season in your life, you will begin to think Amen. that mother doesn't know anything and if you're not careful, you will not want to give honor but God says even in this stage in your life give her honor and praise and esteem and love and respect and obedience. Then there's another season in our lives. When we are getting into good adulthood, our careers are going well, and you are getting to the pinnacle of your rise in society, if you're not careful, you will, and especially when we start our own families, we have our own businesses and what have you, we start developing our own world, if you're not careful, you will find it difficult to have time for mama. But God says in this time, do not let anything, do not let your career, do not let your position, your business, not even your own family stop you from giving honor to your mother. Now, All right. for some of us, we say, well, that's not a problem. I can do that because my mother is a wonderful person, what have you. But there are some of us are some persons who cannot say that. When they get older, they realize mama make mistakes too. 
when they realized that mama did not do all of the things that I thought she ought to do or could have done. He, the Lord said, in spite of that, in spite of that, your mother may not have been the ideal person in your life, did not set the standards that you thought ought to have been set, you still owe her honor. You say, well, why do I owe her honor? Well, let me give you two reasons. Number one, she allowed you and permitted you to come into this world. Lord have mercy. She, she did not do anything to fix it so that you could not come into this world. Listen, the fact that she gave you birth, and in some instances it may have been not in the best of circumstances for her. It may have brought her shame. It may have brought her consternation. It may have brought her rejection. But in spite of that and knowing it before you were born, she allowed you to come into this world and did not do anything to prevent you from coming. The very fact that she allowed you to come into the world is enough for you to give her honor and respect and praise and love and obedience for the rest of your life. Because if she had not done that, you would not be here. Amen. So the number one reason that you ought to give mother respect no matter who she is and how she turned out to be is because she allowed you to be born. She allowed you to come into this world. She went through the suffering and the inconvenience and all of that and allowed you to come into the world. Second reason is all the protection that you received and all the nurture that you received while you were in the womb came from her. There was nobody else came in and brought you some milk. There was nobody else came in and gave you <laughs> nourishment. All that you received came from mother. It is because of her that you received what you needed in order to grow in the womb and to be born into this world. For those two reasons, that's enough for you to respect and honor and praise and give love and reverence, and obedience to your mother, regardless. Now, for some of us, we didn't have that. Mother was always there. She was the answer. She, and, and we don't have a problem. But not all children have come with that. But God said, no matter how you grew up, no matter what your mother and who she was, you still are obligated to honor her. And the main reason is because she allowed and permitted you to come into this world. And every ounce of nurture that you receive and protection you receive in the womb, it came from mother. So for those issues alone, we owe mother honor and praise and reverence and respect and obedience. My, my, my. Then, 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 then he said, honor her. Then honor your mother. And then he said that the reason you honor her, uh, that things may, and I, 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 I looked at that word may, that things may be well with thee. Well means things will go good with you. Things will be prosperous. He said they may. And, 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 and I, I, I wonder why, why he said may. If I'm giving my mother honor and respect and praise and reverence and obedience and love throughout the seasons of my life and out the season of her life throughout that, then, then, then why can't I have a better assurance that things will go well with me uh, in, in my life? Why is there a may? And, and, and I realize that he was allowing us to look at it from our perspective. Sometimes in life, it may not feel like things are going well with you when actually they are. Now, now I remember, and some of you too, we was coming up and we had to go face our daddy when he came home from work. That was not a pleasant time. So we had done some stuff we should not have done, gone some places we should not have gone. 
we decide to exercise our free moral agency and not pay attention to his rules. And we had to go in and face him. And when we went in and faced him, he got that belt or that strap or whatever it was, and he began to wear us out with it. At that time, I did not feel like things was going well with me. I thought they were going bad with me. Not realizing from his perspective and from God's perspective, things were going well because he was giving me the discipline that I needed that I could be come out of my own free moral age and recognize that were rules and regulations I'm going to have to obey in life. I could not always have things my way and do what I wanted to do. He was teaching me a valuable lesson. But at the moment, I did not think things were going well with me. Now, in the Bible, Job, Job, when Job was going through his suffering, he did not think things were going well with him. When he lost all of his property, when he lost his children, when his health lost his health, and he was going through all those difficult times, Job did not feel like things were going well with him. He cried out unto God and said, Lord, why are things going so bad with me? Why don't you tell me what's going on? That was from Job's perspective. From God's perspective, things were going well with Job because Job was staying with God not because he had all of his property and children. He was staying with God in spite of the fact he lost it all. And in God's sight, that was going well with Job. So he put it may go well from our perspective. Well, sometimes in life, things, things don't look like they're going well with us. That we've got problems we've been working with for years and sicknesses we've been dealing with for years. And it looked like things are not going well from our perspective. But from God's perspective, he said, that's my child. Look how they are still hanging on to me. Look how they are still worshiping me, even in spite of the difficulties they're going through with. So... The may has to do with our perspective. Because sometimes when it does not look well for us, from God's perspective, things is going, things are going well with us. So things will go well with us in this life from God's perspective. And that we will live long. Now long has to do more than with just longevity. It means that you will have a full life. You will experience it the fullness of life. Jesus came that you will have life and have it to the full, that you will have good experiences, that you will experience many of the wonderful things that God has in store for you. You, you don't give God a reason to cut you off when you honor your mother and father. When you honor them, then they will teach you how to walk in God's way. And when you walk in God's way, there's no reason for you not to experience all of the wonderful things that God has planned for you in this life. So honor your mother and father. Now, what does that do? Why? What does that do? Tell us what, but why would we do that? Number one, uh -huh. uh, the reasons why we want to honor my mother is because it brings glory to God. Yeah. My, my, my. God said do it. And when we obey God by doing it in all the seasons of our lives, and all the seasons of mother life, it brings glory to God. It brings, it gives praises to him. It gives honor and distinction, high praise and honor. God gets glory out of it. And all that we do should do for the glory of God. And God does all things for his own glory. And he will not share his glory with anyone. Amen. So first of all, Amen. The benefit of doing it and why we want to do it is because it glorifies God. Second, we want to do it because it recognizes the significance of mother. Oh, if it were not for mother, we would not even be here. If it were not for mother willing to put up 
with all of the pain that she would have to go through in bringing you into delivery. If she was not willing to go through all the pain and the difficulty and the sacrifices to carry you in a womb for the nine month period of time and put up with the cramps and the disfiguring of her body and the strain on her health, if she was not willing to do that, you would not be here. Mother is significant. Uh -huh. And when you give honor to mother, you do show that you recognize the significance of mother. Oh, sometimes we act like we don't recognize how significant mother is. We allow other things and other people to steal our time and our affections to the point that we have little or no time for our mother, especially when she gets to the point in time when we feel that we have surpassed her in our knowledge and in our achievements, and she no longer walks in the circle that we walk in, if we're not careful, we will fail to recognize the significance of mother. If she had not agreed to allow you to come into this world, you would not be walking in the circles you're walking in. So the fact that you honor her says to God that you recognize, it says to her that you recognize how significant she is. And it gives mother a kind or a sense of significance that she cannot get any other way. When her children rise up and call her blessed, when her children show that they love and respect mother, regardless of the mistakes that she may have made, when they rise up and show respect for her mother, even though they may have surpassed mother in achievements and what have you, when they rise up and condescend to show respect for mother, it gives mother a kind of significance that she cannot get any other way and causes her to realize that the sacrifices she has made have not been in vain. So that's another reason why it is important that we show recognition to mother. And then the last, it pays off for you. It said that your life will be long and it will be full and it will be rich and that you will be able to receive all the benefits that God has for us and has for you. And God has a plan for you. God's aware of you. He's concerned about you. He's got a plan for your life. And when you are a mother, you put yourself in a position to receive all the benefit God has planned for you. And oh, who want to miss the benefits that God has planned for us in this life? And not only in this life, when we meet the plan that God has provided for us, it will be a time for us to spend with him on the other side. So God demonstrated his uh, recognition of the significance of mother by placing this commandment in the Old Testament and by bringing it forward into the New Testament, which is the age of grace, and not leave it back in the Old Testament, which was the age of the law, and those two things. And then the third, he demonstrated it on the cross. You remember when Jesus was on the cross after he had prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, after they came and got him, and after they marched him through Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall, and when they took him up and made him go up uh, the Golgotha Hill, and when they laid him on that cross, nailed him on that cross, and on nailed his feet, not for anything that he had done, because Pilate said, I find no wrong in this man, but yet he did it willingly because it was the design of the Father for him to bear the sins of the world so there could be a reconciliation between us and God. While he was on that cross, in his agony, while he was on that cross paying the price for our sin, he looked down and saw his mother. And when he saw his mother, he recognized that even though he was dying, he was still her oldest son. And that it was his responsibility to make sure that provision was made for his mother. Because by this time, evidently, Joseph had not had ceased to live. And then the oldest son, it fell to him to provide for his mother. 
And he did something on that cross that puzzled me. He said, Mother, behold your son. And when he said that, he was not talking about the other children that she had. He was not talking about James, a son of Mary's. He was not talking about Jude, another son of Mary. He was talking about John, his disciple, who was not her son by birth. And I said, wonder why he assigned her to John and not leave the responsibilities to her other children. And then it was shown to me that at that time, the other children, though they were hers, they were not followers of him. They were not yet come to faith. They were not believers in him as the Lord. But Mary, his mother, was a believer. And he wanted to place her somewhere where not only could she receive the protection and provisions that she needed to maintain in this life, he wanted to place her in an atmosphere where she would be free to praise him without the other children being jealous of her, thinking she was putting him ahead of them. So he took her out of that situation, which would have been uncomfortable for her to still praise Jesus, even though he was dead, had died and risen from the dead and was gone into glory, still praising a son she could not see above those that she had right there with her, she placed him, her, into the hands of a, this, of a, of a believer, John, and uh, Amen. so that he would not only provide for her personal and physical needs, but he would be a source of inspiration for her spiritual needs as well. So on the cross, Amen. God, through his son, Jesus Christ, showed how he felt about his mother. He stopped dying long enough to make provisions for her, not only provisions for her physical well-being, but also to place her the atmosphere for her spiritual well-being as well. So, so it's important for us then to recognize if God thinks that well of mother, that he would make it a command that we honor her, regardless of who she is. And for most of us, it's not a problem because mother is the sweetest thing that we have ever experienced in this life. Mother is the greatest friend that we can ever know in this life. Mother is always there as long as she's able to be there for us, no matter who we are and how high we get. She always will love us. She will always have our back. She will always pray for us. She will always do all she can to make our lives as well as she can. She will make do any sacrifice to herself and her well-being to put us ahead of herself. But for some, it may not be that way, but God says, still do it. Because if it was not for her, you wouldn't even be here. So the fact that you're here you, she's already done enough when she brought you in the world for you to give her honor and praise and, and, and respect and love and obedience the rest of your life. So on this Mother's Day, we want to ask all of you to remember your mother. Those of you who still have mother with us and you have allowed some issues to come up between you and your mother, you need to bury those issues today. Throw them in the sea of forgetfulness. Give them to God. Let him handle them through his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And go and make up with your mother. Give her honor today. Do not allow anything to come between you and your mother. Do not set up any walls. Go to your mother. Make amends for whatever it is that's come between you so that you can honor her as the commandment says. You can give respect to her. Now, he recognized that in some instances this would be difficult. But we have to realize that in this Ephesians scripture, that Paul was talking to the saints, those who are in the kingdom of God, 
But now there are more than just saints in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, it's like a sheepfold. There's some in there who recognizes his authority, recognizes his reign, and there's some who do not. But now Paul was not writing to those who are in the kingdom of God and all of us in the kingdom of God because kingdom of God, wherever God rules and God rules everything he owns and Psalm 24 said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in. So God reigns in the earth where we are and this is his kingdom. But some of us, some do not recognize his kingdom. And for you, it's going to be difficult for you to honor your mother like you should. But for those who are in the kingdom, who have done what's necessary to be in the family of God, who recognize the reign of God, those of you who are in the kingdom, he realized that it may be times when it's difficult for you, as it is to do any of the commandments that he has required us to do. But he wants you to know that you don't have to worry. He's already provided the help you need in order to do whatever it is he has commanded you to do. He's given you a continuous indwelling presence of himself through the Holy Ghost to enable you to do that stuff you find difficult to do. So we have no excuse. Make amends, whoever it is that's not right with your mother. Go and make amends while you yet have time. Because you will give glory to God when you do. You will cause mother to realize that her significance and the sacrifice she made have not been in vain. And it will pay off for you in the end. If you will make up and do what you need to be done to honor your mother while she's yet with you. If you allow that time to pass go to God now in humble submission and confess your wrong to him and God is so amazing that he will forgive you of your wrong cleanse you of all unrighteousness and fix you as if you have never sinned he'll give you the peace that you're seeking he'll give you the sense of joy that you're seeking in this world and he will allow that to continue with you over into the world to come. So on this Mother's Day, we want to suggest that each one of us, we want to compel, we want to coerce, we want to exhort each one of you to honor your mother. Whether she's with you or whether she's going on to glory, honor her because it gives glory to God. If she's still with you, and even if she isn't, it calls her to understand her significance and that the sacrifice that she has already made to bring you into the world were not in vain and that it will pay off from you. And God wants us to do it because he included the commandment in the Old Testament under the law. He brought it forward to the New Testament under the age of grace and he demonstrated it on the cross through his son, Jesus Christ. So I implore you to give honor and respect to your mother while you yet have time. Make things right between you and her. If it's too late, then make things right between you and God. And God will do the rest like he always does. He's so merciful. He's so forgiving. He, he, he's so generous and plenteous in his mercy and grace. All he wants us to do is just bring our burden to him and he will bear our burden and he will fix it so that we can handle whatever it is that's gone wrong in our relationships in the past. He'll fix it so that we can experience joy right now in this life and then joy in the life to come. Sisters and brothers, this is the message God would have us to hear today want us to know what his view is about mother and how he commands us to do regarding our mother, to honor her because he thinks it's worthwhile to do it. It gives glory to him, significance to her, 
and it pays off for us. With that, we want to say, God bless you. We trust that this message has found a place in your heart. And that if things are not right with you and your mother, you will do all you can to lean on the Lord to help you to get them right while you yet have time. And if you think your mother and all she ought to be, remember, she allowed you to come into this world. And that's enough for you to honor her the rest of your days. With that, we want to say God bless you and God keep you. And we want to invite you to join us on our Bible study on Wednesdays at noon on the same prayer line and on Facebook. And then we want to invite you to join us for our prayer time on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock on our prayer line. And then we want to invite you to join us back next Sunday uh, on our prayer line and on our Facebook. As we have decided Amen. that we would not try to re-enter the church for services until the first Sunday in June, if things are still going well, go well between now and then. And if the increase in things are not going well, then we will extend it further. And even if we things are going well and we do decide to go back into the church for services, we realize that some of our members won't be able to do it because they have that there is no vaccine for the virus and that they have underlying health issues that will not permit them to come. So bearing that in mind, we still will continue to broadcast on the prayer line and on Facebook. And we want to invite you to give. God has given to you and he wants you to give but to him, but he wants you to give for the right reason. Give because you love God. Give because you're grateful for what God has already done for you. You give because you understand who he is. And you give for the glory of God. And you can give by using the app, the Givelify app on, our, on your phone. You give by mailing it in to the church at 2774 County Road 236 in Tyler, Texas, 75705. Or you can make provisions to bring it by the church. Because Brother Bolson is at the church after the message today, and he'll be able to receive your gift. Or you can call him. He will be glad to make arrangements to meet you, he or Brother Kent, to meet you to receive your gifts so that you can give to the Lord. So you can give by Gimplify, you can give by mailing it in, you can give by um, calling Brother Bolson or Brother Kent to make arrangements. But make sure when you give, you're giving for the right reason, for your love of God, because of what God has done for you. And when you give for that reason, you get credit for it. Now, they don't own the church books, but you get credit for it on the heavenly books. If you give it for any other reason than for the glory of God, you still get credit on the church book, but you won't get credit on the heavenly book. And we want you to get credit on the uh -huh. heavenly book. So give for the right reason. Yes. Because of your love of God, understanding who he is and what he's done for you. And for your gratefulness and thankful to God for who he is and for what he's done for you. Again, on behalf of myself and my sister uh, crew here at the house, my wife, Sister Diane Davis, and our son, John, who I could not... Oh, here's John. John, come and say hello to the people and show them the card that you that you gave your mother for Mother's Day and the flowers you gave her. And say hello to them. Amen. Stand back. They can see you and hear you. Show them the card. Say, this is the card. Now show them the flowers you gave your mother. These are the flowers that you gave her, the roses. Now wave to them and say Happy Mother's Day. All right. Say Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Brother John. We are so proud of John. and He's such a wonderful person. A great help. He's been with us during all this pandemic. He has not gone to his other house. He's been spending all of his time 24-7 with me and with his mother. And we have certainly enjoyed having John with us. Amen. He's been such a help to us. 
at this season in our life and in his life. All right, with that then, we're going to say again, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers on the line and mothers everywhere. But remember, God said in his word to honor your mother. It's all right to honor other mothers, but honor your mother, thy mother, your mother. Honor your mother. And if things are not right between you and your mother, do what you can to make it right. And if you want to, God will help you to do it. Amen. So with that, we're going to say goodbye for this session. And God bless. And we pray that you will have a safe uh, time until we meet again. That you do all you can to practice social distancing and disinfecting, wearing your mask and gloves when you go out in the public so that you can do all that you can. And once you do all you can, we'll read the rest, we'll relieve the rest of the Lord. With that, we're going to say goodbye and good day. Happy Mother's Day. And we'll see you next time. Amen. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye.